Our next chapter is on populations. So we just talked about communities, biodiversity, ecosystems, and we're going to talk a little bit about populations, both um, animal and plant populations, as well as the human population. So this is a new section. So go ahead and you can just make the title populations or you can write understanding populations, whatever works easiest for you. Now, you do not need to write this down. Again, you don't need to write it down. Um, we've gone over it a whole bunch of times. If you still want to write it down, go for it. But again, you have it already in your notes. We've gone over it a couple different times. So a population, just to review, is a group of individuals of the same species that all live in the same area. So the example here is all of the bass in an Iowa lake, all of the zebras in this area, all of the squirrels in your backyard. Those are all populations. So they have to be the same species and they have to be living in a specific area together. So what we're going to talk about is why scientists look at populations and how they study them. How do they figure out the population size, the density, you know, and how can these things help us uh, look at how communities and ecosystems evolve. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is exponential growth. So how does a population grow? There's two different ways. Um, uh, well, actually, a couple different ways we're going to talk about. These are typical graphs showing a population growing. So the first one here is exponential growth. Remember, an exponent is a number that's like up in the little corner, right? That's an exponent. So if we have a graph of exponential growth, it looks like this with a big curved line going up. So what this is showing us is they grow faster and faster at an exponential rate. It's not like when you guys in math class have just, that's really not a straight line, pretend that's a straight line, um, and you calculate the slope. The slope is telling you how fast it's growing, and the slope's always the same. So if the slope is 2, that's how much the population is growing by, right? Two times every year. So over here with the exponential growth, it's not growing at the same rate, okay? Maybe it grows, uh, maybe it doubles here and it triples here and quadruples here. So the rate that it grows gets faster and faster and bigger and bigger as you go on, okay? Now, when does exponential growth happen? It only happens when you have plenty of resources, okay? So we have to have enough food, space, water for the organisms in order to grow, okay? If we have, let's say, a group of um, bears up north in Wisconsin, blackberries, and there are only three berry bushes around, okay? We're not going to get this huge population growth if there's not enough food for all of those bears to survive. So we have to have enough resources, and that includes space, okay? Especially for organisms like tigers and lions that are really territorial, they require really big areas, um, we need enough space. That's also true of bacteria, okay? We can't just have bacteria grow forever and ever in a little dish in a lab because they will eventually run out of space. And then, of course, we can't have too many predators, otherwise they're just going to kill the population and keep it at a stable size so the population won't be growing. Okay, so exponential growth, this is actually, we're going to talk about, this is how human growth, human growth is occurring right now. It's an exponential rate. So the human population is growing faster and faster and faster. Linear growth is when a population increases at the same rate over time, okay? So maybe it increases by 10%, okay? Uh, or maybe it increases by 10 people every single year. So this is an example of linear growth. The population increases at the same rate over time. We can see this in populations as well. Um, but the one thing I would like to stress is that typically in science, we don't see beautiful, pretty straight little lines here. 
a lot of times what we end up seeing are a whole bunch of dots for like a scatter plot and then scientists put a nice pretty straight line in there okay so in science we don't really see in real life straight lines okay but we can approximate them now neither of these is how populations typically grow okay they won't grow forever and ever and ever like exponential or linear why well because they have limits there's only so much food and space and water so most populations follow what we call a logistic model okay and it looks like an s so that's this guy down here notice it looks like exponential but then it levels off okay now why does it level off well at some point we have to reach the maximum number of individuals that the environment can support because maybe there's only so much food or maybe there's a certain number of predators or maybe there's only so much space. So this leveling off right here, we give a special name to, okay? Where it levels off. This is called the carrying capacity. And this is the maximum population that the environment will support. Why? Because maybe the environment only has so much food. Maybe the environment only has so much space, okay? So if we think about the word capacity, right? What does capacity mean? Capacity means like the maximum level. So the maximum capacity on a bus is the maximum number of people before they can say it's full, right? So carrying capacity is the maximum number that the ecosystem can carry or hold um, before, you know, we're gonna start running out of resources. Now, sometimes populations go above their carrying capacity, okay? And when that happens, then they eat up all the food or a particular resource, and then all of a sudden we see the population go back down because it was using too many resources. So as a result, maybe there wasn't enough food. So some of the organisms die of starvation, and we see the population dip back down, and then eventually it'll level off again at that carrying capacity. So this is a picture of the human population from a long, long time ago, 8,000 BC, all the way until today. Notice, super, super small growth right here, up until about 1500, 16, 1700s, okay? So I want you to think about why did our population grow so much in the 15, 16, 17, 18, 1900s and today? Why did it start growing here? Why didn't it start growing over here? All right. Um, the answer, okay, think about why people died. Why did people die in the old days? They died a lot of times due to disease or sickness, right? And in the 15, 16, 1700s, there were a lot of scientific advances that allowed individuals um, to create medicine to prevent these deaths. They started learning more and more about medicines and technology and health. So we have that as well as the invention of the plow and the industrial revolution where we get all of these machines that help us grow more food. So the population is currently growing exponentially. Okay, now um, you don't need to write this down, okay, you can if you want, but the reason that the population grew is because in, of advances in sanitation, so learning that things should be clean and that will prevent the spread of germs. Medicine, the first antibiotics were created. Nutrition, they figured out that, you know, some people were getting sick because they didn't eat the right amounts of food refrigeration, okay? People didn't, um, people no longer got as much food poisoning because the food wasn't spoiled. And then agriculture, and all these things allowed people to live longer, okay? So that's where we're going to stop right now, all right? You guys are going to do a lab or maybe 